and well plans for water reform in particular of course the um, scrapping of the unpopular uh, three waters the dismantling of uh, well what really hadn't got off the ground but what's to take its place and will it be any better joining us on the program now political commentator dr bryce edwards bryce kia ora, good morning uh, Marina, Andrew? It is, um, I suppose, the proof is in the pudding. It's one thing to say, hey, we're against this thing, and certainly Three Waters, uh, well, it was a bit of a rallying cry. Uh, a lot of people opposed to it for various reasons. But um, I suppose the, the next question is, what will the new structure be, and who's going to pay for it all? Wow, that's a lot of questions, and I hope you've slotted in an hour or two for this <laughs> answer. Uh, you're, but you're right in the way you've uh, put this question. Uh, it was part of the last government's downfall. Uh, certainly all the three parties in government at the moment have campaigned strongly on getting rid of Three Waters, yeah. and for various different reasons. And it's now been repealed, I think, as of this morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's gone through urgency and uh, the, the new government's got rid of it. And they're talking about their, what they're going to replace it with. And, of course, National campaigned on um, a, reforms. I think they called it local water done well. Yeah. Uh, and so they're going to implement some of that. But they've actually set up a working group. Okay. Um, I, I thought working groups were just something that Jacinda Ardern did. But no, uh, <laughs> Christopher Luxon does them as well. And uh, I guess I think it's appropriate, though. Yep. They don't have all the answers. So they want to get a few experts in to um, come up with something and uh, consult with people about it. So we're not entirely sure what it's going to look like. It will have elements in common with Three Waters, mm -hmm. whereby councils will be encouraged to amalgamate their water services. Um, and originally Three Waters... Uh, did that, but then towards the end, what made it very unpopular was that it compulsorily did this, yeah. whereas national scheme will only voluntarily encourage this. And I think there's a lot of consensus that amalgamation is the way to go. That there's lots of little councils individually running sewerage, water supplies, and stuff, and it would be best if they could bring it together. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I do note about what Simeon Brown, the local uh, government minister, has announced is that he is putting the onus on local councils to sort this out. Yep. He's not coming in to save the day and say, we've got lots of money, we can spend it on your infrastructure. Um, so local councils, I don't think, are going to be necessarily celebrating this new thing. It, it might be the best thing, but it's not going to kind of save them get them out of the hot seat i think the political consensus is we know what we don't want which is three waters uh but we're not sure what the thing that we do want is so let's bring in some consultants i mean this is, <laughs> in terms of consultants and perhaps even some lobbyists like you mentioned this sounds like the the previous government to an extent some quite significant news which may have slipped under the radar a little bit although uh, Guy and Espiner did a very nice piece on this, um, lobbyists getting access back into Parliament. This seems like a bit of a reversal of um, some, some comments particularly made by Nicola Willis in the build-up to the election and an extra layer of secrecy from Jerry Brownlee. Yeah, so lobbying globally has become more and more uh, scrutinised and I guess voters are more suspicious of the way wealthy individuals and organisations, you know, uh, are seen to control the political process. And I, I do a bit of research in this area and I'm always a big fan of Guy Nespin's RNZ uh, yep. investigations into lobbying. And so he came out a few days ago uh, with news that, um, well, again, if you go back to last year, uh, the government made some changes in terms of lobbying. They got the Ministry of Justice to start a program of reform, mm -hmm. and they also cancelled the swipe cards that lobbyists and other outside interests have for getting into, par into the parliamentary complexes without having to go through security and... Yep get appointments and all those sort of things. And that was always uh, well received. Well, it was well, re well received. It was kind of a symbolic um, reform. And then Guy and Espiner announced uh, you know, news that Jerry Brownlee, the new speaker, has done a U-turn on that okay. and is now giving out uh, swipe cards to lobbyists. But I must quickly say that it appears that Guy and Espiner got the wrong end of the stick in oh. his report. And um, Jerry Brownlee has since clarified 
No, he hasn't given out um, swipe passes to lobbyists. He's only actually given swipe cards to um, people from the Green and to Party Mari. Oh, uh, okay. People from outside the parliamentary complex who need to come in and deal with their MPs. Um, he's given passes to them. And I think he made a bit of a, a joke or a, a pointed point to Guy and Espiner saying, well, these could be lobbyists. Um, and Guy and Espiner <laughs> sort of took him um, kind of seriously about that. Um, but what he meant is it's hard to define what a lobbyist is. Yeah, and yeah. these people work for political parties, but you know, what are they doing? Who knows? But I'll just quickly say, um, Jerry Brownlee has also decided that he's not he's no longer going to um disclose who the, the identities of the people with the yep. um these passes i mean that's perhaps and, a more significant thing uh secrecy never looks good in government circles right no no and uh, it's a yeah i don't know there are always rights of privacy for yes. individuals and we do have to weigh these things up but yeah i think it's a bad look uh to give uh, secrecy especially when it's um it's not even government uh aligned people that have been given these passes <laughs> it's uh it's green and to party mari activists essentially that are given these passes hey but when, once it's secret i suppose we won't know who's coming in and who's not coming in yeah, uh, that, less of right. an opportunity so, to shine a light in that regard well, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, last week, of course, we were talking, it was uh, the day after Waitangi and uh, and all that happened there. We had a great discussion on that topic. But it, it seems that, uh, well, at least in theory, the government has got a bit of a Waitangi, a post-Waitangi polls boost, um, Bryce. Yes. Well, as I think we talked about before, you know, a lot of the debate around the treaty and the way that the Prime Minister and his other ministers performed at Waitangi. It got a lot of negative media coverage, yep. but I don't think the public would have received it badly. I think they probably uh, were interested in these debates and and thought that Luxon's probably taking a, a, a middle road between kind of extremes on these things mm -hmm. and is probably doing quite a good job of this. And so it is quite incredible, though, just to look at, I mean, I follow the media quite closely mm -hmm. and there's been a huge amount of scrutiny and really negative headlines about this government. And yep. that's fair enough. That's what the media should do. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's resonating with the public. I think the public are still being quite, I don't know, fair at least, to a new government. This is what tends to happen. You get a new government, people, the public, you know, are willing to give them a fair go. Yeah. And um, and so the, the poll numbers have gone up about 3% for national mm -hmm. and an amazing 5% for ACT. Can and, I just jump in on that one? Because yeah. uh, in, in, in from a Waitangi setting, there was nothing good could be said about uh, well, the ACT party generally and David Seymour in particular. For um, this poll boost to be going against that perceived tide or, as you say, reported tide in the media, can we draw a causal link or could this be coincidence, do you think? Oh, look, I, I, I think there's a link. Absolutely. So Seymour has been in so much news. He's had so much publicity and his, you know, his politics, his agenda is being put forward by him. Yep. Even though it's been criticised, condemned, I think it will be resonating with a lot of people. And, you know, often what happens is, well, what I like to compare it with the current situation is what we had in the UK with Brexit. Mm -hmm. um, or, a couple of decades, we had both the the Labour and Tory parties having a bit of a consensus on being on the UK being integrated into the European Union uh, about immigration being uh, good, lots of immigration, but not all voters were convinced by this. Yeah, and even their own parties, you know, there were a lot of people that were against this in those main parties, but there wasn't allowed to be public input into those policy settings mm -hmm. and i think we're seeing something like that with the, with the treaty that labor and national have been generally in favor of you know um treaty centric policies should we mm -hmm. say yep. and the public haven't been brought with them on that and so act is kind of picking up on that zeitgeist yep. discontent and wants a referendum just as some people in britain wanted the brexit referendum and the more that national um, say, no, that's not going to be allowed, I don't think that does kill it off. I yep. think they'll continue to, for probably a number of years, be pressure for some sort of public involvement in deciding where the treaty sits in our constitutional arrangements.
Yeah, certainly a 5% gain for ACT is it's, it's not necessarily going to change the government's mind about supporting the, uh, the bill no. beyond its first reading, but it is an interesting indicator of a public feeling. Uh, public it could continue, though. Yeah, yeah. It could continue. And I note that David Seymour, in that latest poll, as preferred prime minister, I think also jumped from something like 5 to 10%. Okay. And, um, you know, that's that is a, I, should be a worry for national. I, I think that's the highest he's ever been in that regard, except when yeah. he was on um, the, the dancing programme. But uh, but we won't go back to that. <laughs> hey, no, uh, really <laughs> Bryce, appreciate your, uh, your comments as always. Thank you for your insight. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers, Andrew. Thanks for joining us on Rima. Now, if you found value in today's content, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel with the subscribe button. This really helps us to continue to produce more quality content for you. And hey, if you'd like to stay updated and never miss any of our future videos, ring that notification bell as well. Don't forget to follow us on our other socials, which are in the description below. And until then, stay tuned.